So the other day I was helping somebody who was having some challenges with their labels inside of Keyshot. They needed them to show up in some places, but not others. And at that point I realized labels can be quite confusing. So I decided to record this tutorial to cover a number of areas that can be quite tricky. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to control a label's depth, make sure it shows up exactly where you need it to on the model, as well as some tricks for accurate positioning. And I'll show you how to make sure the label can flow from one part to another, even on unlinked materials, if that's what you need. So without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, let's start by taking a look at what exactly a label is. I'm in the textures library, and there's a folder called labels. There are some Keyshot logos in there by default. I've got my own logo in here. I want to apply it to this wooden block that's standing up. So I'll drag it onto the wooden block and you'll see it looks like it's going to be applied to everything in the scene and I don't want that. So let's go ahead and fix that. The first thing to understand is that when you apply a label or a texture to any material, it will be applied to every material that's linked in your scene. If I go to my scene tab, in the materials sub tab, you'll see that we only have one material actively in this scene. And that is because uh, they're all linked together. All these pieces share one linked material. If I want to apply my logo to just one block, I wanna right click and do an unlink material. Now we have two wood materials in our list. And if I go and apply my logo as a label, you'll see it allows us to apply it to this block on its own. Then I'm gonna to go to add as a label and you'll see it's upside down. I can easily rotate that into position and hold shift and it will snap. And it is backwards, but we can fix that in the mapping properties on the right by doing a flip horizontal. Then I'll hit the green checkbox to accept that. So at this point we have successfully applied a logo or a label to our part. So what makes this a label and not a texture? I mean, I just called it a texture, right? Well, a texture is any graphic or image that we use in computer rendering basically. But in this case, the way it's applied is how it differs from a typical texture. The wood uh, graphic or the wood appearance you see on all these blocks, that is a texture. And it is encompassing or wrapping around or covering the entire block. And when you look at a label, typically a label differs by the fact that it isn't patterned across the whole part. It is a single instance of a graphic. So when I double click on this, we can see how this is set up in the material graph. Inside our material graph, we have a few nodes up top. These are representing the wooden appearance of this block. Down below, we have two nodes representing just my logo. If I hit C to preview, we will see a white logo with a black background. That black background is representing the alpha or transparency. This is a PNG file, meaning it supports transparency. So I have a white logo with transparent background. Now we also have a plastic material, which is determining what the actual appearance of the WG will look like, how shiny it is, all that. If I were to disconnect my logo, you'll see the wood block becomes shiny black plastic. That's because this node is actually a shiny black plastic. It has its own properties that we could adjust. We could change the roughness. We could change the color, whatever we want. But as soon as we plug our label, or I guess our texture in this case, into this plastic, these two become what's considered a label. And it is sitting on top of the textured appearance of the wood block. Now I know labels are cool and all, but they're only a tiny part of Keyshot. If you really want to learn this program, check out my Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. It's already helped hundreds of others level up, including designers from Nike, Dell, Logitech, Sonos, Garmin, Trek, Pepsi, and lots of others. See, I designed the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass to be the most comprehensive course available while still making it super easy to understand. And what makes it different is the unique combination of bite-sized feature-based videos coupled with follow-along project-based lessons. This course will help you build an intuitive understanding of how Keyshot works. Then you'll be able to create and explore within Keyshot without getting bogged down by the technical aspects of the software. My goal is to help you convert your ideas to digital images. When you enroll, you'll get access to over 100 video lessons, quizzes, an active comments section, private Discord server channel, and project files to maximize your learning. So check out the link in the description below to learn more. I hope to see you there. Next up, I want to address something that gets a lot of people confused. If we were to go ahead and look at the backside of our block, you'll notice the logo, the WG, is actually showing on both sides. So why is that? 
This has to do with label depth. And you'll notice this most frequently when you're working on especially thin objects. Your logo or your label might protrude through both sides. So how do we fix that? Why is it happening? Well, when we double click on this material, we can go into its properties once again. We want to go to the label properties. And if we look here, we will see something called depth. Now depth is a property that shows up when you're using a mapping type called planar. And by default, when you apply any sort of label, planar is going to be the mapping type. If we change this to something like box, you'll notice we don't have a depth option. If we try cylinder, we don't have a depth option. I'm gonna go back to planar, but you get the point. When you're using planar mapping, you're going to have a depth slider. Now it looks like my logo kind of reoriented itself. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate that into position here. And you'll notice it still shows through both sides. So when we look at this depth, it's set to zero. This is very confusing, but by default, Keyshot uses a depth of zero, and that means infinity. It is going to project all the way through the object. Keyshot does this so that when people first apply their logo, they can see it and they understand that it's actually there. If they didn't do this, if zero actually literally meant zero depth, we would actually not see the label at all. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna type in a depth of one millimeter and you'll notice it disappears. It doesn't show on either side of the block. Now, if I go to move my texture, we get this helpful indicator that shows where the texture is located in 3D space. From a side view, we see that our texture is aligned with the middle of this wooden block. And if it's only one millimeter thick, or if it only projects one millimeter, that would be one half millimeter in either direction from its center point, we are not seeing it on the outside. So we have a couple options. We can either increase the depth until we see it, and this block is, I don't remember, I think it's maybe 24 millimeters. If I try 25 or something, it'll probably show up, right? But we can go back down to one, and we can also instead just move this to the outer face or surface that we want it to appear on, and now it's not projecting all the way through. It's basically starting from wherever we have this texture located in space, and it's moving probably half a millimeter in either direction from that center point. So that's how the location or depth of labels works. And it may be a little unintuitive at first, but when you realize your object has an origin and you can see that this label is in the, it, well, it was centered. If I go back to zero on the X, Y, and Z, we are aligning it with the uh, Z, Y, and X zero, basically the, the origin of this part that represents the middle of this object and how it was uh, created. So when I move it out to the surface, you can see I moved it about seven and a half millimeters in one direction and now we see it on the surface. Let's say I actually want my logo to appear on every one of these wooden blocks and I want it to appear in the same location relative to each block's origin. Let me demonstrate what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this to a wooden block as a label and I'm going to position it so it's on the side. I'll go ahead and move the texture and I'll scale it down a little bit and just move it off to the side and up. And I also want to go ahead and set the depth to one millimeter so it only shows on this side and we should be good. Okay, so now this is in one instance on this entire set of blocks. That logo is not showing up anywhere else. How would I go about making sure my WG shows up on every block? Well, when we look at center on, we are set to model. That means it's looking at and basing its coordinates, its location here, all these center X, Y, and Z, relative to the bounding box of this entire set of blocks because they're all sharing one linked material. So if I want this to appear on each block, I need to do center on part, not model. Now that will mess up the mapping initially, but if I go ahead and reposition it, click where I want the logo to appear, now I've placed it on the surface. You can see every block has my logo on the right end side. And even if the block is positioned differently, uh, it will show my logo in a different position. It looks like these two up top, you're not seeing it because the logo is probably somewhere on the other side of these. Yeah, so you can see this block is rotated in this direction and this block is rotated here. So why and how does that act, like actually work? So this comes down to uh, how this model is created. And for me to explain that, I'm going to quickly hop into Fusion 360, the 3D software that I use to model this. So here we have our blocks. And what I did, this is quite important to understand. So I've got a um, different 
group for each row, which is not that important. What is important is how each individual block is treated, and they are treated as components. When you model in Fusion 360 and a lot of other CAD software, you can create a body. Usually a single part is considered a body. But when you convert it into a component, you end up giving the each body its own origin, essentially. So if I look at this wooden block, you can see there's an origin. And when I toggle that origin on, you can see every one of these blocks in this assembly each has their own origin. And this is where each instance of the label is being calculated relative to. So even though some of these blocks are rotated 90 degrees away from one another, uh, inside of Keyshot, it's using the same center X, Y, and Z relative to each block's origin or center point. So that's how this works, and it can save you an awful lot of time if you need to set up something, whether that's a detail like threads on a screw, or if you have characters on a keyboard, something like that. So now let's take my label and say I wanna span it or have it flow across multiple objects, just like you see it doing here. In this case, it works fine. Keyshot is by default going to use a center on mode called model. This is going to look at all the parts in our scene here that have the same linked material and treat them as one unit. This allows the label to move across this set of blocks easily. And remember, we used center on part to get each of these white logos to appear relative to each wooden block's center point. We'll go ahead and hit the green checkbox. Now the issue that we're running into here is that the wooden texture that we have on each block is the same. There's no variation, there's no randomness. It doesn't look realistic. Now I have a different tower of wooden blocks I'd like to show you. In this case, I've gone ahead, unlinked every one of these materials and oriented the wood grain texture in a different direction so that this looks more realistic. It's more believable because the wood grain pattern is different for each block. The downside is to make this happen, I had to unlink all these materials. So every block has its own material on it. Now, if I wanna do the same thing I just showed you where the label spans multiple blocks, we're gonna run into an issue here where that's not going to work, or at least not as easily. Let me go ahead and show you why and how to fix that. So in this case, this isn't flowing from block to block because this block that we see the logo on right now is unlinked from this block and this one and this one and so on and so forth. So a way to fix this is I can go in here, double click on the one that shows our label, go to the material graph. I'm gonna shift left click drag to select both those nodes, control C to copy it. And if I go to another block that it should appear on, you'll see it doesn't have the label. So I'm just going to paste it in here and plug it into the appropriate location and we should see it starts to show up on the next block. And I can repeat this wherever I need to. So this isn't a bad way to work. It would be nice if we didn't have to do this, but it's, it's okay, it works fine. Now, there is one other exception to this where this won't work that I'm gonna show you real quick. If I double click on this and I go to move it now, we're gonna notice that it doesn't move all of them together and there's no way to actually prevent that from happening. Um, but the other issue I'm gonna show you if I move this up so it shows up on these other two blocks here, um, and we try to do the same trick we did before where we copy this logo, and I go into one of these wooden blocks, go to paste it in, we might find, I believe, that it will not work as expected. It won't show up on that block. So why is that and where is it, what's going on? If I go into the texture I just pasted in here, go to move texture, we can see it's floating off in space. It is choosing to center it on the model, but the reason this is not working is because I moved these two blocks in Keyshot. Let me explain. So these two wood blocks were actually inside the tower. I pulled them out, creating these negative spaces, and I moved them to the top of the tower. By moving them, I actually messed with, I guess, how Keyshot sees where that texture should go. So if I really needed to get a logo that was spanning multiple uh, bodies like this and I needed to randomize the material or the texture on each body My advice to you for now unless Keyshot makes this easier in the future Is just to make sure that you don't move any of those parts in Keyshot 3d model it the way you would and then you can apply your texture centered on part and then at that point you can go ahead and as you uh, Finish placing that texture on you can go ahead and unlink each material 
and then you can go in and play with the other texture properties that you would need to randomize in order to make it look a little different from the others without moving the label that you placed on there. There you have it. I hope you learned something new in today's tutorial. If you have any questions, drop them down below, as well as requests for future tutorials. Let me know what you wanna see. And until next time, happy rendering.